welcome to the video of my first amateur radio field day i would call it from now on field day uh, field stations for fun finding the perfect place i first went to a caravan and campsite uh, outside of lady smith and um, this was uh, a place i want to use for my newsletters in the future haven't done this campsite yet but sadly there was a lot of power lines so this campsite wouldn't work out and then i decided to go uh, to another campsite i've been to before at the grid locator kilo fox 06 oscar mike which is called tover kralki caravan and campsite uh, just outside of lady smith and from the next photograph you could see the satellite image of the campsite and in the next photograph the awesome campsite of Toverkraki. So getting home it is time to prepare my tour car because should it rain I can operate from inside my tour car and if the weather is nice I'll use outside on the table. This is my tour car in sort of uh, day mode when I take photographs etc. You can see the radios in there and this is my tour car in sleeping mode. Now usually for my newsletter readers they all know I sleep inside my tour car and it makes for a comfortable bed of 1.8 meters long and uh, everything just fits inside the tour car. So let's go get off uh, on to uh, the uh, venue for the trip. Here I'm leaving Lady Smith uh, early in the morning. Lady Smith is of course on the grid locator Kilo Fox 06 Papa Mike. As you can see it's still very very early in the morning and I'm on my way to my field station location which is at grid locator Kilo Fox 06 Oscar Mike. Uh, from the town it is somewhat about 12 kilometers to the turn of of Grandrevier where uh, Dover Kraki Caravan Park is situated and the last little bit of road is um, a dirt road and um, we were lucky to have some rain here in the little Karoo and uh, the road was quite in some terrible um, um, state I would say. I had to drive very 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 slowly and uh, uh, in the distance you can see the the cloud covered mountains of the Swartberg and the Klein Witteberg mountain range and of course uh, should I do uh, summits on the air or some mountain pass that will be awesome to visit. Now this is arriving at the uh, Toverkralki uh, campsite and um, I was wondering because it's, it's weekend you know would I be the only one there because you normally I would take on my camping trips during the week so uh, usually I just wouldn't um, go on a weekend because there's other campers and one might disturb them you know I'm going to play radio on this weekend and I certainly don't want to bother people with the sharp sounds of amateur radio because sound in the morning can travel quite far and this is arriving at the campsite uh, that one caravan over there is frequently used by other campers okay so I've set up my field station uh, on this in this photograph and this is my Alpha Echo 5 Juliet uniform field antenna and uh, there is just the top end of the antenna and uh, the mast is well sort of anchored in the middle with a um, little guide rope anchor and uh, the following photograph is just sort of another uh, angle of my campsite with the antenna so i set up my field station outside under the gazebo and i was ready to play radio now from this log i've made only six entries since the competition started because at one stage um, only four of them made sense to me uh, that was the one Foxtrot stations and only one person gave me a grid locator now I can't understand that a competition station um, taking part in the field day must give me his grid locator 
that I can know where in the field they are. I've got my laptop with me, so I want to check the grid locators. And of the two club stations, none had given me a grid locator. And secondly, um, there's question marks to them. When, wh when I wanted to confirm the QSO, I called the station. I said, my uh, QTH uh, or my grid locator is this. And then he carried on to call um, another station and he never confirmed it so I question marked it and then I draw a line and decide that's it so for my fellow campus I have to finish up another side for my gazebo as the sun um, was uh, quite warm or hot on the radios and then I just walked around the campsite and I've played a little bit of radio in the afternoon again just working stations for fun absolutely not for submission to the logs and then i just spend some time with my photography hobby taking some awesome photographs of the mountains and then it was time by towards evening to prepare my car in sleeping mode so i put the radios inside the car and i made my bed so now that i know everything is um, safe inside the car it's time for my uh, dinner so as usual a little fire going there and um, once again i decided to do a um, pan meal and i just love my pan meals uh, for you guys that follows my fiat uno tour car newsletters would know that uh, the pan meals is absolutely one of my favorites and many other people had gone over to pan meals because it's so comfortable and easy to make you've got only one pan you cook and prepare your food in the pan and of course you just eat it out of the pan so my pan meals are absolutely a camping favorite amongst all of my touring friends and the local south africans all just started to do pan meals so you've got to watch all my other videos on um, uh, you know cooking and camp cooking uh, there's little bits in the newsletter photographs etc so but that is just the way to go and um, now i'm almost ready with a pan meal just have to put in some little bit of spices and salt you know the regular stuff in creating an awesome pan meal And then it is time to eat now <laughs> I don't know some of my previous newsletters the guy said you always make the food but you never eat them yes I do eat them I just sort of never put in a clip of me sitting chowing away on my pan wheels so anyway for you guys that missed that little part in this video there you can see me eating my pan meal and then of course after that washed my pan and went off to bed and the following morning what an awesome sunrise and uh, from the photographs you can see it was it got quite chilly during the night for february here in the klein Karua, and you can see the dew on the grass as i walked around uh, to the ablution block and back and um, taking some photographs and then I decided to um, just listen to some digs so that's my little spot where I sat and just listen to this digs coming in loud and clear Echo. By the way, there were 80 miles north uh, east of Atlanta, Georgia, where 
further north than uh, Bill was. So anyway, I'll copy Bill or Corey. Okay. Very good, Gene. That was a nice report. Sounds like you're hearing him a lot better than you were hearing Tom, which is odd. Tom has uh, got a beam there. And, uh, but anyway, it might have been just a QSB, but they're both of the Cape Town area starting to peak now. They're coming into their prime time as we approach 0500 and, and so on. And we should have some other ZS's in here. It's Sunday morning. Uh, Saturday morning, usually this is a big day, but uh, the band's pretty crowded tonight, and they may be busy, and some of them go to church. And we are trying to get into that mode now, and uh, or in, uh, in that mode already. So that may be why it's a little quieter here on the uh, band today. I haven't heard uh, Mike for quite a while, so that's one RJ2. Okay, and that was listening to the DX, so it was time to start packing up my tour car. And um, I have to say, uh, it is packing tight, getting everything neatly into the tour car. At this point, I just uh, took off the gazebo, and then after that, I took off my field antenna. And uh, then I was r almost ready to roll. And this is what my tour car looks like in traveling mode. So, guys, see you next month in next month newsletter for Fiat Uno tour car adventures. Going up to some mountain pass or maybe to the ocean, some beach somewhere. I don't know. So, just enjoy my newsletters. Click on the link below this video and watch my newsletters and greetings and 73s to all from ZS1 Juliet Delta Tango